Welcome to today's session. We're going to be talking about what it's like to be a marriage commissioner for a wedding reception. Not the easiest of tasks and one in which every one of us who focus on communication skills may find ourselves uh, the, uh, the legitimate uh, uh, target of attention to take on this role. Being a master of ceremonies requires a fair amount of organization ahead of time. And let's just talk about the dynamic of a wedding. A wedding is always a process of organized chaos. Many, many last minute changes are to be expected. And the master of ceremonies is a person that's got to be a, a island, a shoal of calmness in the turbulent seas that uh, they find themselves in. And when you're taking on the role of uh, master of ceremony, it really requires that you um, take charge in, in a certain respect. And sometimes this is not quite easy because a lot of people have a lot of opinions on what should happen. And certainly you need to take on the role of being a listener, but at the same time, you need to provide an element of leadership. Otherwise you will uh, be involved in, in the chaos. And so it falls to the master ceremonies to build a program and to uh, build it in such a way that it can be adapted to as you are undertaking the role of being the uh, MC. You need to really focus upon the fact that two families have come together in the one common marriage. And part of the role of uh, being the MC is to allow each family to get to know the other because they now have a common uh, bond between them, that being the couple. So it's not just a, a day for the couple. It's a way to bring two different uh, family structures um, uh, into a place where they at least uh, know each other. So in the role of being a master of ceremonies, you want to run your portion of the program in good order. You want to be positive and entertaining. Humor is uh, really helpful in this, but not always uh, essential, but very, very helpful. And of course, the humor that we're picking, it can be about family members, it can be about the couple, but it's all in good fun not degrading, not cutting. It's all in good fun. And you want to make sure that things are well arranged, that things run smoothly and on time. You're, you're, because really it's the day for the wedding couple. They shouldn't necessarily have to worry about logistics. You as the master of ceremonies have, have taken on the role of uh, watching the, the logistics, especially once the wedding ceremony is over. To be a good MC, you need to have a clear speaking voice. You need to be uh, filled with politeness. Speak as a qualified voice. Uh, you want to uh, work so that you're commanding respect from the audience and you uh, should have uh, some skill in communicating ideas and feelings. Now, in terms of uh, magic ingredients to be a person in this role, you need to really focus on uh, personal relationships that exist within, within the setting. You want to uh, do your role with uh, uh, buoyant personality, good appearance, and clear organizational skills. You're going to be dealing with strangers. You need to be prepared for that. You also need to uh, have uh, plan A's and plan B's because things will change at the last moment. Um, and you want to be a person that's uh, speaking with some sort of researched expertise as you give advice to individuals uh, throughout the process of the reception. So what we wanna do is uh, create a program uh, we want to recheck that invited and uh, pre, uh, you know special guests are present. Clearly, knowing people's names is a big part of this, and this is not 
not uh, easily done. And I don't recommend that you wait until the, re the rehearsal to try and do your primary research. You want to get this research done with the couple way ahead of time. And they're the ones that will know all the names of the people that are invited to the wedding. So it's, it's good to do that research well in advance. Better yet, if you can get uh, contact emails of family members so that you, you can do things like send an email to uh, an individual who may be in the bridal party, are you prepared to do a toast? They'll come back to, I don't know what to do. Well, then, then you'll be sending to them a sample of the toast that they're gonna be doing to the bride or the groom and so that they can feel comfortable in their role. When you get there, you wanna check the microphone. I've had uh, and observed uh, experiences where the sound system is really not um, working well and you need to get that corrected in, in, in advance. And you know the, the part of the issue is that at the reception, as time goes on, um, people are celebrating they're heading over to the bar and so they're paying less and less attention to what's going on, which means that you want to necessarily, you know, by necessity, seconds wedding done, the second photos are done, the second the food is prepared, you want to get everyone in the room as quickly as possible and start the program um, as quickly as you can. Use of vocabulary and grammar is, uh, is useful. Humor is uh, something that you need to work on quite carefully. And uh, you may, at the re rehearsal, try some of the uh, humor el humorous elements that you've prepared on members of the bridal party, not the couple themselves, just to test out if how well received. Some families really love humor, some families not so much. So you need to be... Um, aware of that. And of course, remember the principle that the larger the audience, the blander the humor should be. In terms of um, how can you get the audience involved? I mean, for example, there's an old tradition of tinging glasses to have the, uh, the couple uh, kiss each other. And I immediately, when I'm in the role as MC, will offer, well, if anyone wants to uh, encourage the couple to do this. First, uh, before the teeing of the glasses, you need to uh, come up and um, tell a funny story, a clean funny story about the couple uh, from your experience. And then um, you can uh, encourage them to, to, to uh, kiss each other. And so th th that's helpful in, in terms of it gets the audience involved it, it adds to the humor of the event and it's getting people to know each other better. You need to be aware of all the announcements that have, have to be made and, and there's a bit of communication work to be done. For example, when I'm in the role of the MC, I immediately go to the in, individual that's operating the bar. What time does the bar close? So I know that. I'll go to the, uh, the, the kitchen uh, and, uh, or the restaurant or the caterer, and I'll ask them, okay, when will the food be ready? So I have aware of the uh, awareness of that timing because then I can encourage the couple during pictures, uh, food will be ready in half an hour, we'll need to wrap up this session so we can have the grand entrance. So making, uh, doing those things to be aware of those timings will not only help you to, um, to run things smoothly, but also will allow you uh, when to give announcements. And I like giving people warning. For example, the couple is expected in 10 minutes, last call before supper to visit for refreshments. So you're giving them a warning and people know what's coming. So I find that very helpful. Here's a bit of a standard program that you can start to work with. You know, usually the wedding service is at two o'clock. This allows for wedding pictures at uh, three. And so, um, you know, usually the meal is ready for between five and six. And so you give the couple a little bit of a break and then you can have the grand entrance of the couple. You organize that with the DJ with a, a song that they've, they've selected. 
you bring them in um, and I don't ask the wedding party to be seated. I ask them to come up to the front, a uh, round of applause for everyone. And then I, I'm, I then usually uh, invite the um, wedding party to, if it's a buffet style, to um, get their, their, their first dibs on the evening meal. Once that's done, then I will go table to table, uh, motivating people to go and uh, uh, be served themselves. And there's usually one hour period here. Now, before we start the meal, I like to do um, grace. And uh, then the meal starts. And then um, we will have a, a bit of a peaceful period for about 45 minutes an hour. In which case, um, I looked and watched for the signals where I see the caterers collecting the dishes because the dishes are very noisy. Get that um, um, behind us. Usually desserts being served and at that moment, you can start the program. And the program doesn't necessarily need to go on for hours and hours and hours. But what I like to do is, in my case, uh, to bring a bit of um, informality to it. I know a little bit about astrology. I know the birth dates of the uh, the couple. And what I do is I like to uh, draw everyone's attention to their astrological signs and the traits that come with them and how the traits work together. That's sort of a, an icebreaker, if you will. And then I call upon as many family members as I can organized in advance to do a toast. So I, I like to have the entire wedding party every member standing up to give a toast to the couple, the groom or the bride and all alternatives. I like to call upon the parents to come in and take over the microphone and say a few words to the couple. And then I go on to what I call a little bit of entertainment. And usually this is in the form of something called the shoe game. And so the idea here is that you have the couple uh, come out and they sit back to back to take off the shoes, uh, one uh, boy's shoe, one girl's shoe, they each have it. And then you ask them a series of questions. And of course, they're all very, uh, uh, they're on the line, you know, things like, well, who asked, um, who, who said, I love you first? And then they put up their answer and everyone gets to see if the answers are in sync and it leads to a bit of a funny situation ask questions like uh, who takes all the covers on the sofa, of course. And of course, everyone laughs at that a little bit and then you, you see the result. And this can go on for a half an hour, again, 45 minutes, free entertainment, very funny. And it allows the uh, family members to see each other. And then I'll invite the couple up. They'll give their final comments. And then what I like to do is do a transition to bring out the uh, wedding cake because it's a photo opportunity. The couple formally cuts the cake. And then everyone hands out the uh, cake pieces as dessert. And that allows for the transition of the DJ to set up the uh, lighting. And as a result, we're ready for you know, the first dance by the couple. So really um, lots of things to think about as you're organizing the uh, program. You know, um, I'd like to talk about the ground rules, sell your phones off, you know, um, you know, I like to announce, you know, when the bar is going to be closing, you know, if there's going to be a sandwich table later in the day, so everyone has an idea. This is all done uh, just uh, after uh, the meal is served um, and we're ready to make the transition to uh, what, what people refer to as the speeches component of the reception. The, um, you know, in terms of the grace, uh, I've given a sample here of what you can say. I have found that this has worked enormously well. And I always uh, come prepared to say grace at any wedding that I, I'm involved with. In terms of the uh, different participants, you can organize a, a series of toasts. And, and these things really do help uh, you know, because invariably the bridal party, both boys and girls, our family members are close friends that know the family. And so by then doing toasts, you really bring out that dynamic beautifully. In terms of uh, the transition to the music uh, entertainment component, always tricky. And you need to coordinate with the DJ. 
Some people just want the first dance. What I do is that I make sure that the entire wedding party at the rehearsal understand it's part of their responsibilities as the bridal party to participate in the first two or three dances so that uh, you have um, by definition pre-designed people on the dance floor to encourage everyone to, to get involved in that transition. Option is the garter toss that's uh, less and less used today, but I do see people that will set out a, a sandwich table later in the evening, usually 11 o'clock. In these times that we find ourselves in, I find that uh, bar times close earlier rather than later. It, you know, I've seen bars open until two o'clock, but now I'm seeing them closing as early as 10, depending on the situation. Of course, you're going to need a microphone as an uh, MC to get yourself heard. You know, um, I like to start off the wedding by taking a glass to get everyone's attention. Somehow that frequency of sound cuts through a crowd. Everyone hears it. Um, the, uh, you know, really, it should be a fun evening, you know, where, um, you know, and I've seen some, some individuals just, they're, they're, they're naturally funny. And they uh, know the family so intimately well that they can really um, do very, very well with humor. But if you're an MC that's being brought in, you don't necessarily have that, that tactical advantage. So there's a lot to do uh, when you take on the role of being a master of ceremonies at a wedding. It's not for everyone, but I have found the uh, experience rewarding. It, um, it, 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 you are uh, working on an impromptu basis. We as Toastmasters do spend a lot of time uh, doing impromptu speaking, but this is almost like impromptu speaking with uh, a lot of advanced uh, preparation, if you can put it that way. But I, I encourage people to take on this role, no question about it. It uh, can be a very rewarding one and one that, um, I recommend that anyone takes on if they're uh, given the opportunity.